The American crocodile seen here is one of 23 species of crocodilians that are found in various parts of the world. Besides occurring here in the Jardines de Lorena of Cuba, American crocodiles are also found in parts of Florida in the United States, Venezuela, Jamaica, Cuba, and along the coasts of Central America, South America, and southern Mexico. American crocodiles live in both freshwater and brackish habitats along the coast, including estuaries, lagoons, and mangrove swamps. Some populations have been found in surprising locations, including the cooling canals outside of the Turkey Point nuclear power plant in Florida and in the landlocked salty lake waters of Lago Enriquillo in the Dominican Republic. <laughs> Adult American crocodiles eat primarily at night, feeding on various aquatic species including fish, especially mullet, crabs, turtles, and sometimes birds and small mammals. Juveniles eat marine invertebrates and small fish. As predators, crocodiles play a vital role in the food cycle of their ecosystems. After feeding, the waste they produce fertilizes the aquatic plants growing in the local waterways. These plants are then eaten by herbivorous fish and other aquatic animals, which are eaten by carnivorous fish that are often preyed upon by the crocodiles. <laughs> Male American crocodiles grow larger than their female counterparts. In fact, they can grow as long as 20 feet. However, crocodiles in the wild, in general, rarely exceed 14 feet. And this would only apply to the males. Females, by contrast, only grow to a maximum length of 12 feet. American crocodile nesting sites are usually wooded areas near small beaches or along narrow coastal creeks. Nests are made from well-draining holes in the ground. If a desirable site is not in close range, the American crocodiles will build mounds in which to nest. For this reason, they will lay eggs in the dry season. Females lay between 30 and 60 eggs, which hatch after about 90 days, generally at the onset of the rainy season. At the time of hatching, the mother has been observed to open the nest, unearth the eggs, and even help the offspring out of their eggs by gently cracking the shells with her mouth. She may then take them to the water in her mouth as well. There have been varying reports of the level of parental care that occurs once the eggs have hatched. With the exception of observed populations in Mexico, the juveniles generally leave the nesting area a few days after hatching, and little parental care occurs from this point onward. Crocodile here is seen feeding on a filleted horse-eyed jack that was given to it by the crew of our boat. Apparently, this crocodile is used to such feedings. It's going to go down the throat all at once. In part one of this documentary, we noted that Alcorn coral has been wiped out from as much as 95% or more of its former range throughout the Caribbean, Florida, and the Bahamas. But here in the Jardines de la Reina, we have a notable exception. 
Indeed, we can see here that the Alcorn coral provides excellent habitat for quite a number of different fish species, including sergeant majors, grunts, snappers, and tangs. And as was noted in part one as well, there are an estimated 7,000 stands of Elkhorn coral occurring throughout the Jardines de la Reina. That is an unusually high amount of Elkhorn coral. A coral species that in modern times is rarely encountered throughout the remainder of the Caribbean. The scrawled filed fish's body color varies from bluish gray to olive brown. The body and head are patterned with short, bright blue lines and small black dots. The body is slender and the snout is long and slightly upturned, giving the head a concave profile. The tail is long, rounded, and broom-like. The scrawled filed fish grows to a length of three feet. It is found worldwide in tropical waters. It is common throughout the Caribbean. Its diet includes hydrozoans, algae, gorgonians, seagrass, sea anemones, and tunicates. The tarpon is a large fish in the Megalopidae family. Researchers recognize two living species within the family, the Atlantic and the Indo-Pacific. The Atlantic is the larger of the two species and is the one seen here. We will confine our comments to this Atlantic species. Adults reach lengths of five or six feet and can surpass 350 pounds in weight. It is a muscular and powerful fish that uses its speed to capture prey, which are swallowed whole. A curious aspect of the tarpon is its ability to gulp down air with its mouth and then store this air in its specialized swim bladder, which effectively functions as a lung. This enables the tarpon to range into certain low oxygen level habitats, such as certain mangrove swamps, that other predators cannot enter. Although the tarpon is primarily a saltwater species, it also ranges into freshwater. Some of the different habitats they live in include bays, coastal regions, open ocean, estuaries, and lagoons. The diet of this species varies depending upon how old it is. While they are young, they feed primarily on zooplankton, such as krill and fish larvae as well as insects and other invertebrates. As adults, tarpon hunt for fish and other seafood. Some common prey include needlefish, shrimp, crabs, and pinfish. The Spanish hogfish is a species of wrasse native to the Western Atlantic Ocean. It can be found from North Carolina and Bermuda through the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico to Southern Brazil. 
It inhabits coral or rock reefs at depths from 3 to about 230 feet. While the adults feed on such prey as mollusks, crustaceans, echinoderms, and worms, the juveniles act as cleaner fishes. This species can reach a length of about 16 inches, though most do not exceed 11 inches. The yellowtail snapper is an abundant species of snapper native to the western Atlantic Ocean, including the Gulf of Mexico and the Caribbean Sea. Although they have been found as far north as Massachusetts, their normal range is along Florida, south to the West Indies and Brazil. Yellowtail snappers feed on shrimp, crabs, worms, and smaller fish. The creel wrasse is a small wrasse, with males attaining a maximum length of about 12 inches. Females are a little bit smaller. It has a typical wrasse shape. Like many wrasses, it changes color markedly during its lifetime, with juveniles being almost completely violet purple. As it matures, it develops a yellow patch on the rear portion of its body. The creel wrasse is a protogenous hermaphrodite. The largest fish in a group is a dominant breeding male while smaller fish remain female. If the dominant male dies, the largest female changes sex. The great barracuda is present in tropical to warm temperate waters in subtropical parts of the Indian Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, from mangrove areas to deep reef with a lower depth limit of about 350 feet. With exceptionally large individuals reaching lengths of 5 feet and weights in excess of 50 pounds, we can note that great barracudas are voracious predators that hunt by ambush. They rely on surprise and short bursts of speed, up to 27 miles per hour, to overrun their prey. Attaining adult lengths of up to 4 inches, the bicolored damselfish is common throughout the Caribbean. Inhabiting coral reefs, it is very territorial aggressively defending a small area. It feeds on algae and detritus. The blue chromis is a damselfish in the family Pomacentridae. It is a solitary fish that can be found on occasion in small groups. They are a non-migratory species and normally occur in shallow water reef environments in depths up to 82 feet. In part one of this documentary, we saw the terminal phase of the spotlight parrotfish. Here we see the initial phase of this species. A protogenous hermaphrodite, the stoplight parrotfish shows full sexual dichromaticism, meaning that it changes its sex from female to male during its lifespan.
Usually attaining an adult size of 3 to 5 pounds, the ocean triggerfish feeds on a wide range of large zooplankton, which includes larvae, very young fishes, squids, shrimps, and jellyfish. In part one of this documentary, we presented the Caribbean blue tang in its adult blue color. Here we see the juvenile, which has a yellow color. As is the case with most grouper species, the black groupers begin their lives as females, after which, at a certain age and size, they change into males. Black groupers desire the rocky bottoms around reefs within the western Atlantic, the place where they eat smaller fish and crustaceans and develop to nearly 52 inches in length.
and here we see a barjack that we formerly saw in part one shadowing a southern stingray. The giant barrel sponge is the largest species of sponge found growing on Caribbean coral reefs. It is common at depths greater than 33 feet to 390 feet and can reach a diameter of 6 feet. All sponges are filter feeders. As is the case with other sponges, the giant barrel sponge absorbs dissolved organic compounds directly from the seawater as part of its diet. The Cuban rock iguana, also known as the Cuban ground iguana or Cuban iguana, is a species of lizard of the iguana family. It is the second largest of the West Indian rock iguanas, one of the most endangered groups of lizards. A herbivorous species with a thick tail and spiked jaws, it is one of the largest lizards in the Caribbean. The Cuban iguana is distributed throughout the mainland of Cuba and its surrounding islets, with a feral population thriving in Isla Magueyes, Puerto Rico. A subspecies is found on the Cayman Islands of Little Cayman and Cayman Brac. Females guard their nest sites and one population nests in the sites excavated by Cuban crocodiles. As a defense measure, the Cuban iguana often makes its home within or near prickly pear cacti. The Cuban hutia, or Desmarus hutia, is a stout, furry, rat-like mammal found only on Cuba and nearby islands, such as those making up the archipelago of the Jardines de la Reina. It has a head and body length of about 12 to 24 inches and a tail length that's about 5.5 to 11.4 inches. Cuban hutias normally live in pairs, but can be found individually or in small groups. They are diurnal and do not burrow, so during the night they rest in hollows in rocks or trees. Cuban hutias are omnivores, but they mostly eat bark, leaves, and fruit. Occasionally they will take small vertebrates, such as lizards. Both males and females scent mark their territory with urine. And living amongst the Cuban hutias are some land hermit crabs, which have become famous in the pet trade. Notably, land hermit crabs, which must return to the ocean to breed, cannot breed in captivity. It is therefore conservation wise not to keep these animals as pets.
it seems that this land hermit crab survived its Hutia encounter just fine. And the land hermit crab should also survive this iguana encounter just fine as well. Returning to the water, let's enjoy some time observing the Goliath groupers, which we discussed earlier in part one. And here again, which we saw in part one, is the dog snapper. This is a huge school of them. I'm estimating there were at least 2,000 of them here. And this big fellow, this Goliath grouper, I wouldn't be surprised if he regularly makes a meal of some of these dog snappers. Note the hawksbill sea turtle just left of center screen. I didn't even know that I had videoed this sea turtle when I took this footage. I was very concentrated on getting the shark. Later when I examined it, I saw the sea turtle. That was a nice treat.
Note the cleaner fishes attending to this Nassau grouper, especially in the area of its face. Thank you.